<laughs> what is success to you, Ted? 10,000 Spotify plays or 10,000 babes? 10,000 babes, that sounds like a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's an indie flex. Today we have with us Mr. Tete Essien, who is going to play Cribbage songs and talk a little bit about them, his moves in the future and where he's going with it. I'm Tet, a songwriter and musician. I'm basically at the start of trying to build something as an artist. We've got three songs of yours today that we want to play. The Animal Farm company you got involved with at the moment, mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about them. In terms of my creativity, I think and imagine in different parts, that aspect of my musicianship has definitely grown. And the idea that I'm solely in charge of a thing and not having to like justify why I've decided to play something in a certain way. For instance, if I write a song, it's no longer the case. It's like, oh, OK, I need obviously a vocal, two guitars, bass and a drum bit. And that gives you more kind of impetus to be creative, to find a way of still getting that song across in a slightly different way, but still make it just as like as potent and like effective. Are you worried at all about finding the right musicians for you? More than anything, more than musical ability, what I find is having like trust in that person to represent them songs and get them across as well as possible because with being someone who writes songs, you feel a certain ownership over them. And so there's times where you maybe feel a bit reluctant to kind of share them. So feeling that trust from someone that they're gonna bring as much to the song that they can or bring out certain things in it is a big thing for me. So I, I'm excited about the prospect of getting in a room with people who are excited about the songs that I'm coming up with and who I feel that like will be able to perform them as good as possible. Should we listen to the first track? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this song's called Aviator. One of the pluses of writing down lyrics on my phone is that when you put it in the notes, it tells you the date of when you did it. So when I looked back at my phone the other day, it told me that I think it was May 2016. It's the first time I wrote down a version of it. I have a habit of going back and like reworking songs. This is one of the songs in which I did that. Um, this particular person that I've written about, it's just them kind of struggling to come to terms with feeling ordinary where maybe once you felt like spotlight was on you. Well, she'd never played this screen, but always held the trick of how illusionists would chase her. Tried to slip in where you'd creep, but in and you'd miss it. Watch the clock and you'll never get to later. Sick, man. Sick. That's really cool. Nice That's one. really Thanks, cool. Thank I really you. like that. How, how would you react if I said that it almost sounds kind of... If those choruses had a little bit more ooze in the background, that could fit quite nicely. It's a little bit of glam rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take that well. that line in the background. Uh, <laughs> no, i take that well. I quite like glam rock, so... Yeah. Oh, I, I heard a little bit of, uh, you know, Flash Gordon lightning strike over that. <laughs> <laughs> Going the chorus. That's the best. In, that's that's the best compliment I've had on that. I think. How do you go about choosing the sounds you're going to pick for this kind of music? But when writing-wise, it's so heavily guitar-based. The more I think of myself as being a musician, the less I think of myself as like strictly being a rock musician. I wouldn't want someone to come up and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, you guy, indie rock, right?" And I'm like, "Well, because obviously that's something that I like. Clearly, you just said that song. Yeah, I think if you dig into the song, it's elements of the other things that I like, and then being able to showcase that is something that excites me again. But like, if it's like a challenge, at least it's a new depth to musicianship. Being able to move away from just the instrument you're playing, I exactly. guess, and, and see it not just as as I'm going to make something for this sound, but this is the note, this is the harmony, this is what I want to exactly. get down, and I want to say it with this particular sound. Exactly. And uh, I assume that's a process you enjoyed. When I started writing songs, it would just be the melody and the lyrics and then some guitar chords, maybe a riff over the top of that, and as time went on, it's like, well, come on, with bass bits, and then trying to work in harmonies and stuff. The more li- music you listen to, the more you kind of want not to steal things from, but take elements from thinking about the music that you like. Helps you, I guess, actualize what it what it might be that the music that you want to make is gonna sound like. So when it comes to things like 
working on synth lines. It's something I've not done before May or whatever. I mean, that's the first time I got like a MIDI keyboard. My attitude towards it is, well, it's not like I need to be good at playing synth or playing keyboards or anything. I just need to be able to get across what I can hear in my head. Do you feel like, you know, that's the first one you're putting out that's like, this is me. And as a first song, does it get across exactly what you want to get across? When Shay Fox has been knocking about, I just thought it'd just be a good opening single. It doesn't really, it doesn't, my favorite thing about it, and I have to pick one thing is that to me it sounds kind of streamlined, like it kind of gets in and out in like three minutes 30. It's a nice introduction, I think, to me. You said it earlier about uh, not directly stealing from other people, but have you ever stole from anyone else? Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, there's a song, Too Much Too Soon, I used to play. It sounds a lot like um, Barely Legal by The Strokes. And I knew that, but I thought it didn't sound like <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, at the time I was like, I, I still like it, so that's yeah, whatever. Yeah, it works for them, so exactly. you don't make it yourself. Exactly. You've got enough money, it's my turn. All right, should we move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Um, run away. You know I plan on leaving this place, cutting ties and getting away. And if you don't know by now, darling, you'll never know. And it's all too much to take, and we make like runaways. Walked in circles of my life, seen or all, seen nothing. And I don't care. Brandon Flowers at your heart out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really Is killing. That, is that what you're hearing? Yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. Well, particularly in the choruses anyway. Man, yeah, that's really cool. I really like that one. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, I think that's my that's the, uh, the brother that I've shown. I think that's his favourite one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the intro is really cool. What was that? What was uh So, I guess painting some sort of landscape. Yeah, um, we, we um, recorded all of that, the instruments and stuff. And I was like, we were, I'd gone back for a second, like a separate day to do the to do the mixes with um, Matt, the producer. He was like, anything else? I was like, I can't even imagine there being some kind of ambience at the beginning, some kind of like movement before it's even started. And he was like, I kind of see Waterloo Station when I hear the song, kind of got a pulse to it. So then he's gone through um, audio samples he's got. I mean, he's gone through like a bear and landed on those a couple of things. Yeah, so you've got like, the heartbeat and the steps. But yeah, no, um, I was pleased with the way that came out as well. I remember him saying that it sounded kind of cinematic. So the fact that it, it's kind of got a narrative to it, that element adds to that aspect of the song. So yeah, t tell us a little bit about what's going on here. What was? Why did you want to make this song? When I first started writing lyrics, a lot of the things were about kind of escapism. Like a lot of the films and books that I like have that kind of element. So I guess it's just like a like a retelling of that kind of theme. I guess it's kind of like coming full circle because I started off writing songs like that, and you've ended up with one of your first singles, so um, having that kind of that kind of feeling to it. It kind of felt like fitting in that way. Obviously, that's initially not what I expected to hear. How do you feel about the influence that Animal Farm have had on your music? I like that partnership of being able to bounce ideas off someone and you know, saying, well, if you do this, so yeah, I've, I've enjoyed that side, yeah. What I appreciated is having that time to try anything. It's like, what well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't quite sound right, we can make it sound right, we change a couple of things, which has always been my approach to writing songs. I kind of rarely will toss a song aside, like if it's like, 
okay, it's a bit shit here or there. I can rework that. Would you say it's important to, instead of discarding, push through and make sure you get things finished? I'm a big fan of Queens of Stone Age and um, Josh Homme released an album, I think it was last year, Villains, and on a, there's a song that he'd had for, like the riff, or a song that he'd had for like years, like over a decade or whatever, and you always think, oh, it sucks. And as he'd gotten older, he'd think, well, nothing sucks. He's just like, if I feel that way, it's just because I don't understand it yet. So having that approach of thinking, well, no, no it's just, it needs a bit of work. I just need to grow with it. I certainly find more useful because you always have like times where you're listening to an interview, reading an interview where it's like, yeah, we wrote, 150 songs for this album and I'm, in my head it's like what well, doesn't really make sense how about you just do you know what I mean before we go into the last track uh, not so long ago you were struggling a bit with your relationship with music so I just wanted to ask what it was that pushed you through that partly in my head it's like well it's easier to part your aspirations if it's like a, a pipe dream certainly in my head it's like well, well this thing's kind of not gone in a certain way let me focus and do something proper now all the money I spent on guitar pedals and fare to gigs it's like I can Buy loads of jackets for that. And it's so like you're trying to like you're trying to. So jackets are better than gigs. Is that what I you're think saying? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are. I've had more people compliment my jackets than my gigs. <laughs> but um, you do have some good jackets. <laughs> when you try to reason with yourself that oh yeah I don't need to do this is it's just a thing that I do it's not a thing that I am. Which is still true. It's not like I don't need to write songs. I don't want to go. It's like yeah man I need to I need to put something out if I don't write I get migraines and shit. It's like it's not it. It's something that I do. Um, I don't remember, I don't know. I kind of like decided that I wasn't going to do music anymore. This isn't the thing for you now. It's like, well, no, I can't ignore that this is something that I enjoy doing. It's like, why would you give up doing something that you enjoy doing for no reason? Do you know what I mean? What would be the parameters for you saying, oh, I've done it, I've done well, this music has done what I wanted it to do, and now I'm happy and I can sit? What, what is success? Spotify? Yeah, yeah, where? <laughs> what is success to you, Ted? Um, 10,000 Spotify plays or 10,000? Babes. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 babes, that sounds like a, Way lot, too like, like a lot of money. <laughs> um, also, I'd be disappointed if I got like no radio play at this point, but I'd be pretty disappointed <laughs> if I got no <laughs> radio play. This time next year, from any of them, people have blown up over less. You know, you've known people who've blown up about SoundCloud demos and got signed off that. To be gigging semi regularly, at least rehearsing regularly, a couple thousand plays on my on these songs um enough encouragement to keep going with it because there's enough times where people are going to tell you that oh this isn't what, what, like, this is all well and good but like i'm gonna do something real now do you know what i mean if you're surrounded by those types of people like, certainly on me it, it has an effect at some point i don't know like enough of a sign that yeah this is i'm on something here like this needs to be followed through to the end yeah a couple gigs a couple plays um a couple babes no, right, let's uh, let's listen to let's listen to the last track. What's this one called? Closing time. Close tracks eleven, a lot of tired eyes, full frozen aisle. Shoulder seat for start to repeat. Their shoulders the hardest for miles. Track had made Peep show so down Placid Bromley boy on display Cause I know Yeah, really nice. But, uh, the the other two styles, you know, it's quite nice to to, to hear that more like uh, uh, ambience inspired yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of sound going on there. I mm. really like the lead line that was coming in on the left side. You know, the dun, 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 yeah, 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 that's really cool. I really like that. That was very good, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nice. I remember having the chorus for ages, and then finished writing the verse, and then after that I was stuck stuck but didn't finish writing finish writing the um the lyrics for like months and but i kind of was like you know you just get a feeling about a thing 
when you go to a restaurant and you've never been there before and you look at the menu you think that's what I'm gonna eat and it's gonna taste nice and it does. I kind of had a feeling that this would be the perfect way to round it off because like you said it's different, it shows a different side. But like I said, I wouldn't want to get pigeonholed as just some indie rock. Having something different, but not just for the sake of being different, having something that I, I, mean, I think starts quality to it, that can show a different element to your sound. It was really important for me to have something like that to, to showcase as well. That amongst the three that we've heard so far would be the one that I think that's the most tech. Yeah. From what I've heard, yeah, for sure. That's the way I remember, I guess, mm -hmm. the music feeling was yeah, most in that one, which is which is really nice to hear. I mean, I I, I, uh, I assume you're happy, and you know, you feel like that is the, I guess, closing time of the. Of the three. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did that. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> um, the other day, I had to kind of write down different adjectives that describe my sound and with the way that people, I asked a couple of other people was, and the words that they use apply to a song like Closing Time more than maybe the other two that we've heard previously. There's that, it's my default then. Yeah. There's worse defaults to have. I had a song, the first song I ever wrote was called Closing Time. Well, I say I ever wrote, like I had written lyrics for a couple of years before that, but the first time I'd put lyrics and melody to chords was there a song called Closing Time and the opening line on this is the same opening line that was there back when I was 15. What is Closing Time about? What's the, what's the story behind this? So one of the things that I kind of like about songs the most is that I can set up a, a scenario and have it not be about that girl or that guy or that thing that's happening. I can just have it be about a feeling. I can come up with some kind of narrative to tell this thing that's there on the surface, but underlying for that is there's a more prevalent kind of message. Closing Time is about the moment you realise something has to end whether that be a relationship with someone that you're seeing or or chasing a dream or whatever. I always find that, that to be the saddest bit. When you're like, I can't continue to sing, like I adore. That's like the most sunken feeling that I think you get, because then you've got to get used to it and then you've got to actually en enact it. Like the first, the initial thing always feels like it stings the most to me. And I hate goodbyes, so this is, a, this is just a song about goodbyes, I guess. Before we wrap up, so goodbyes. Anything you would like to say about these three songs? Anything that you'd encourage people to go out and do with your music? You get a lot more from music when you're sitting down and you're actively listening to it. I think you find things in it that you might not necessarily feel like you have just have it on the background. So in an ideal world, when someone listens to your music, at least for the first time, they'd be focusing on that. So, I mean, that'd be nice, but obviously you don't want to tell people how to listen to your music. You're happy yeah, yeah, if yeah. they listen to it at all. So um, I like to think that I work quite hard on the words. So if uh, you listen to that, hopefully you'll agree. Just in, in, in essence, hoping people connect with what yeah. you've done. Fingers crossed. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Chat. Thank you, Joe, for having me. That's right. Anytime, anytime, anytime. It's indie. <laughs>